right. We are in Golden Bear Country. So one more time. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. That's more like it. Look here. My name is Robert Johnson. I'm the president of Western New England University. I want to welcome Governor uh, uh, Governor Healy uh, to our campus today, along with her secretaries, Lauren Jones, secretariats, Lauren Jones, uh, Patrick Tuckweiler, and uh, how? Yeah. How? Terry, how? Terry, there she is. <laughs> Uh, we're, we're so pleased that they're here. They've come to take a look at uh, some great work that's happening in our engineering program. We're really, really excited because Western New England University fits so well into the ethos of what the governor's trying to do with workforce development. We very much believe in the powerful preparation for the future of work. Uh, as many of you have heard me say, we are educating young people for jobs that do not yet exist to solve problems yet to be identified, uh, utilizing technology that have not, has yet to be created. Uh, we are looking at the opportunity with our advanced manu manufacturing program here at Western New England University to stand up some training that will be unique for this region, but will create a, a, a workforce that will be second to none to help employers throughout the Commonwealth. Today, it is so important that we have Governor Healy here to talk about all of the wonderful things that she's doing with she and her administration. Uh, we want to thank Mass Tech uh, for the support that they've provided us as well uh, for the robotic arms and more work that is yet to be done. You know, when we think about Governor Healy, uh, we think about someone who is often imitated but never duplicated. <laughs> uh, she is my favorite governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. <laughs> I'm just saying, okay? <laughs> but with no further ado, I want to welcome our leader, our visionary, first and foremost, the person that's boldly taking this state where we've never gone before, Governor Mar Healy. Oh, well, great to, uh, great to see you, and uh, I wish I could be duplicated. It would help me cover more parts of the state uh, more regularly, but I got to say, President Johnson, it is a treat for our team, and we really are a team. That's how our administration rolls, and uh, you folks appreciate that here in Springfield, um, especially not too far from the Hall of Fame. Um, we are very much a team, and so that's why you see so many of us here today. Um, this is how we get things done. And I just want to thank you for the invitation to visit, to visit this incredible university. It's a real gem. Um, it's, it's something very, very special. And we just saw that having had the chance to tour a couple of classrooms, spend time with professors and students who are utilizing some of the economic dev development funding that we are once again uh, seeking authorization for from the legislature. But I want to thank you for your vision, President Johnson, because you really understand how to tie education to workforce, uh, to growth and opportunity for people. And you brought that here to Western New England University big time. It's an honor to be joined and stand uh, alongside fantastic colleagues in government. Representative Carlos Gonzalez, appreciate you and all that you do. Um, you can give him a clap. <laughs> Work together on a lot of issues, especially issues of economic empowerment, and really appreciate your advocacy big time. And always great to stand with Mayor Sarno. Um, over the years, we've worked together on a lot of fronts, and proud to be alongside you here today in the great city of Springfield. Let me, uh, let me reference to our team. Um, it is important, and there's a reason why. You know, we're, we're a, we, we don't operate in silos in our administration, um, because the fact of the matter is the problems that present uh, and, the, and the challenges that present really require collaboration across all of government. And so it is not uncommon for you to see folks from each of these secretariats in the same room for these events. It's how we actually get things done. I want to begin with our Secretary of Economic Development, Yvonne Howe. She's hit the state by storm, doing a fantastic job. You'll hear from her shortly about not only her economic development plan, but importantly, the legislation that we recently filed. So Yvonne Howe is here. We also have... 
We also have our Secretary of Labor and Workforce Development, Lauren Jones. We were just together with our senior advisor, Roger Burnell, up at the Building Trades, just up the road. And Lauren is doing a fantastic job uh, doing something that hasn't been done before in that secretariat in government, and that is standing up a whole program with an undersecretary dedicated to apprenticeships, dedicated to apprenticeships, because we want young people from Western New England working in addition to learning all at the same time. And I'm looking out at some fantastic employers and, uh, and others here who I know can put uh, talented people to, to work, uh, including talented people I see up in the back there who were showing off to us a little while ago with robots and all. And finally, our Secretary of Education, Pat Tutwiler. Um, this is our uh, Secretary Pat Tutwiler here. And, you know, Pat's in charge of making sure that we make the right investments all the way from, you know, the, 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 the earliest days in a young person's life all the way through higher ed and the kinds of investments that we're looking to make, improving access to vocational schools, to our community colleges, to our state colleges and universities is critical, and he's got an eye on workforce uh, and also economic development, and that's why uh, he is here. Our CEO, Carolyn Kirk, and the team from Mass Tech Collaborative, thank you for the amazing work you do, uh, getting funding out the door to great places like uh, Western New England, and our industry partners who are here today. Uh, Kristen Carlson, you'll hear from her, president of, of Peerless Precision, a small but mighty advanced manufacturer based in Westfield. And then Mike, Mike Tomasi, president and CEO of AccuRounds, and importantly, co-chair of the state's Advanced Manufacturing Collaborative. We're here today to talk about the Mass Leads Act, which is the economic development bill that we recently filed. This is an act that would make sure that we are investing in every sector of our economy across every region of this state. It's designed to keep us a global leader in certain sectors that we already own and don't want to give up on, relinquish, and it's also designed to make sure that we're growing in new, sec in new areas, new sectors, where we think we have tremendous, tremendous opportunity. Today we chose to come to Western New England because it is the perfect place to highlight the bill's focus on advanced manufacturing and robotics. We just took a tour and got a glimpse of advanced manufacturing and robotics at work. We saw students working with robotics devices, learning how to weld using augmented reality, uh, which is incredible. You can go in, you can learn how to weld uh, without even getting close to a flame, and um, it's, it's just incredibly cool what is out there in terms of uh, the development of cutting-edge tools that help develop cutting-edge skills that will power us forward. Now, the Mass Tech Collaborative in our administration, where we come in, uh, and thanks to the funding from our legislature, we're providing some of the funding that enables the, the setting up of these labs and these spaces, funding the very technology and the robots that we just saw being used. So our plan for the next decade, because our vision is long-term investment, strategic investment, is to make sure that we are growing these kinds of great programs. We want to take them to a new and transformative level here in Springfield and all across the state. That's what this Economic Development Bill, Mass Leads Act, does. It includes $99 million to continue and expand advanced manufacturing partnerships through Mass Tech. These funds will support collaboration among manufacturers, colleges, nonprofits, and businesses, strengthening the entire ecosystem. It also contains a new, and this is new, a $25 million investment in what we're calling our Robotics Investment Program. Do you know in um, uh, just last year, Massachusetts was only second to California in venture capital investment in robotics. We were second in the entire country in VC funding for robotics. People know this is a place to come. And we want to use that and grow that, amplify that. We already have more than 400 companies and 35 R&D programs across 18 campuses, like what you see here. That's amazing. We're already a leader, but we know there's so much more we can do, and so much more we can do working together. 
Through the Mass Leads Act, these investments and others will scale the kinds of opportunities we see here at Western New England to transformative levels. This is the right time to invest in Massachusetts. You know, just this past fall, we were chosen by the US Defense Department and the Biden administration as the regional microelectronics hub. That's a big deal, that's a big deal. I said at the outset that we were gonna make Massachusetts more competitive, more affordable, more equitable, and one of the ways we're competing is for federal funding. To date, since I established an office of federal funds and we've worked to chase every federal dollar out there, we've brought $3 billion back to the state. That's good. And that award, that award is part of the federal government's initiative to restore America's leadership in microelectronics. And the reason I mention that is because the coalition is headed by Mass Tech, state government, and Western New England University is a member. So together we worked with a bunch of folks in putting together an application, made a play for this funding, and we were able to land it. And that's gonna help us grow our microelectronics from lab to fab and everything in between, creating jobs here in Springfield and all around the state. I want Massachusetts to win. We just met a student who said, what did he say, Yvonne? He said, uh, he loves Massachusetts more than anything. Well, the biggest yeah. fan of Massachusetts. Biggest fan of Massachusetts. Massachusetts. And we said, well, you got some competition for that. Sure. But we love, we love this spirit because we're the, we join you as the biggest fans of this great state. It's why we want people staying here, moving here, growing businesses here, expanding here. This is a great, great state with endless opportunity and potential if we work together. And I promise you, you will have no harder working, more competitive administration than ours when it comes to getting after it and getting it done. And with that, I want to turn uh, the podium over right now to our fantastic Economic Development Secretary, Yvonne Howe. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Governor, for um, uh, this incredible uh, inspiration and for all your leadership and support. And uh, the governor talked a lot about team, and everyone knows I talk a lot about Team Massachusetts. It's become kind of a uh, drinking game, I think, and I, I wear my bracelet all the time along my Taylor Swift bracelet. But um, we do believe in Team Massachusetts, and I especially believe in Team Western Massachusetts. So... Uh, um, some of you may know, some of you may know that I first came to this state as an undergrad out here in Western Massachusetts. Uh, I, I went to Williams College. I know Mike's son played football at Amherst, so we won't talk about that too much right now. We're still friends. Uh, but uh, but um, that was my first introduction to the state. And then since then, I've spent a lot of time out here. I have a place out here. I was actually here yesterday at UMass Amherst in the Pioneer Valley. And I was just here about a month ago uh, with visiting small businesses in Springfield. You all have an incredible team here in Western Massachusetts. You have incredible academic institutions and leaders like President Johnson. You have incredible, incredible legislators. You have incredible companies like AccuRounds and like Peerless Precision. You have incredible um, talent all in the community. Rick Sullivan, Christina Royal, the BIC, all of the students here. Team Western Massachusetts is unstoppable. You represent a lot of the best of our state here in Western Massachusetts. So I'm a huge believer. We've done a lot of great things but we know there's still so much more potential in this region and in the state. And so last year when I took, took this role on, one of the first things we did is we did this economic development plan, which was required by our wicked smart legislators. And doing that plan, we went all around the state, including spending a lot of time here. We talked to all of our sectors, and we looked at a lot of data, and we focused on the Healy Driscoll priorities of equity, affordability, and competitiveness. And one piece of data that, I, that really jumped out at me that I think about all the time is um, something we should be really proud of. We are the highest income per capita state. We just surpassed Connecticut. So we are the wealthiest state. But the other data point I think about even more often than that is we are the third most unequal state in terms of income. And we, when you dig into that, you can see that it's by ethnicity, it's by educational background, it's a lot by region. The income per capita in eastern Massachusetts is um, 30 or $40,000 more than the income per capita here in this region. We can do better, right? Team Western Massachusetts, we can do better than that. So, so, 
So that is why we are here today to talk about this Mass Leads Act. That is why this bill is so important for us to get passed. Because this bill has all of these investments that are going to fuel the future of economic growth here in Western Mass and throughout all of the regions of our state. We're going to invest in all these important sectors that we saw today, like robotics, like advanced manufacturing, um, like climate tech, like AI, and President Johnson is actually on our AI task force. So we're going to make these investments as part of this Mass Leads Act and create a ton of new jobs, a ton of new companies, and a ton of economic growth to close this income inequality gap and help all regions rise with our state. Now, so this, we're really excited to partner with our legislative team to work on this and to get this passed. Now, some people might say, some people have asked me directly, including yesterday, um, well, how can we afford this? And I will, ask, I will ask a different question. How can we afford not to do this? And um, I have, these are not, um, I've been a CFO in my prior life, and I think about expenses really different than I think about investments. Expenses are things you spend money on and then they go away. These are investments that we're planting the seeds that will drive future economic growth and will pay back in multiple returns to our state and to this region. And I've been an investor uh, in my prior life, and I've done a lot of diligence, and I will tell you, I would bet on Team Massachusetts any day. I would make those investments here because I know this team will deliver a huge return on investment for our state. So, um, so that's why it's so important for all of us to work together with our legislative team to get this bill uh, passed. And um, I am so excited to do that work with you. So very grateful for Team Western Massachusetts, for Team Massachusetts, and also for our incredible local leadership. So let me now introduce you to our mayor. We've come a long way from rock'em, sock'em robots, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> First of all, to uh, President Johnson, always dapperly clad, it's great to be back up on your campus. We were up here uh, a few months back, your Baja off-vehicle, uh, off-track vehicle team and the bridge uh, team that you have competing nationally. And Western New England University is one of the top engineering schools in the state. So President Johnson, thank you for your, your leadership. To uh, State Representative Carlos Gonzalez, Salsa Economics, and to my Chief Development Officer Tim Sheehan, who's also here. To Governor Healy, I'm going to make an analogy here. Governor Healy was an all-star point guard. They run the floor. They call the plays. So she has her secretariats here, and uh, uh, she had Secretary Tutwiler, education, so we've got to educate our population. And then workforce development, so she has Secretariat Jones here, Lauren Jones. And then you have uh, economic development, Secretary Howe. So you have education, workforce uh, development, and uh, uh, labor here. When you put that all together, the governor's calling to play. That all equals a good four-letter word, jobs, J-O-B-S. So it's extremely important with one of the top engineering schools in the state, with Western New England University, and we have one of the top vocational technical schools in the state with Putnam Vocational Technical Academy. We work with our employers with the workforce development. There are plenty of jobs out there. And it's not the old days of your father or grandfather working in a dark, dingy, uh, maybe uncleanly uh, machine shop now. That's why STEM education is so, so important, math and, and science. And it can lead to great, great uh, careers. The average age of a machinist now, precision, or a machinist, let's just say, is 55 years old. So they have to revamp those uh, individuals uh, coming in. So there's the opportunity. And uh, I know I'm going to be introducing Miss Manufacturing, Kristen Carlson from Peerless. But we have some great companies here in the city of Springfield. You have Nash, you have Advance, you have Tyflex, you have Smith & Wesson, all looking for people with precision machining to work. So Governor Healy, I thank you because you and your cabinet have been frequent visitors here to the city of Springfield in Western Massachusetts. And again, remember that equation, education. Okay, then you got labor, and then you got economic development. What does that equal? Jobs, J-O-B-S. <laughs> Without further ado, put your hands together for Miss Manufacturing herself, Kristen Carlson from Peerless, who's done a great job, and what she did, where was, was a young lady or young man you gave a card to offering a, cards? cards. Yeah. <laughs> so she puts her money where her mouth is. Great company to work for. Kristen Carlson. I, like that, I did love okay. that. Thank you. <laughs> 
for a long time, I wondered if you actually remembered my name or if you just knew me as Miss Manufacturing. So, <laughs> well, thank you everyone for having me today. My name is Kristen Carlson and I am president and owner of Peerless Precision. We are located in Westfield, Massachusetts. We are uh, 48 years old this year. Um, I am second generation owner. It's been in my family since 1997. Um, unlike uh, the stereotypical average age of most manufacturers, you'll notice I am not a 55 year old man. Um, actually, the average age in my shop is now uh, in the 30s and 40s. Yep. So what we do is we are a um, precision machine shop and we make small, complex, tight tolerance mechanical components that go into engines, fuel injection systems, hydraulics, landing gear. Um, we have parts that we had a hand in that are going on the uh, lunar landing modules either this year or next year. Uh, we make parts for prosthetics, robotics, medical device, other medical devices lenses for giant microscopes that uh, the company that we sell these to was behind developing the camera that cost, caught a picture of the first black hole a few years ago. Wow. Most importantly, and I know everyone in this room is old enough to remember this, we are one, one of three critical component suppliers in New England to, to the cryogenic submicro cooling systems for thermal imaging, night vision, and infrared cameras. When they found the Boston Marathon bomber in 2013, hiding underneath that tarp and the boat in Watertown, Massachusetts, we had parts in that shop that were running the cryogenic systems. That camera never would have found him for, if it wasn't for what we make in Westfield. So that's, that's, that's what my company does. That is pretty much what Western Mass Manufacturing is. We are such a tight, large ecosystem. I mean, we are, our roots in Western Mass go back to manufacturing. Um, I never thought in a million years that I would end up running the family business, but here I am and I love doing it and it's a really fun gig to be in. We wouldn't be able to do this if we were not able to collaborate with our fellow manufacturers and the folks at the state. Um, we can't do this alone, whether it's uh, get, bring in a new technology, uh, because technology is changing faster than we can afford to bring it in. Um, you're looking at any time a machine shop has to bring in a robot, uh, another CNC machine, you know, hundreds of thousands to million, millions of dollars of investments. Usually we don't do that without knowing the work's coming, uh, but in order for us to continue to stay competitive, we have to be, keep making those investments. I've been lucky enough to partner with Mass Tech Collaborative. Um, I'm a past recipient of the M2I2 grant, uh, which allowed us to bring laser welding into our facility, um, which brought work that was going to California to Massachusetts. And it, over the course... That's good. That's yeah. what we want. Yep. <clears throat> since, we, since we received that laser welder through the MT2I2 grant, we have brought $5 million over the past five years of work from California to Massachusetts. It ends up going into those thermal imager, imaging cameras. Now we're just not making parts for the defense industry, but now we're on the commercial, scientific, and research side of it too. So uh, we, from my perspective, we want it all to come to Massachusetts. I do, I do a lot at the national level. Um, I am chair of the Workforce Training Fund for the state of Massachusetts. I am the new Workforce Development Team Lead for the National Tooling and Machining Association. And I will tell everyone right now that there is no other state in this country that supports the manufacturing industry like Massachusetts does. And the fact that no matter um, who the administration is, um, or what things change either you know, because of a pandemic going on, whatever else, the support is always still there. And that means the world to me. It just, it chokes me up. It's, I hear the struggles that a lot of other companies go through throughout the, the country. And I am, I feel so lucky that we have a shop here to be able to work with our fellow machine shops and also know that we've got a good partner in the state and our local legislators to keep us going. So the importance, why is advanced manufacturing important in Western Massachusetts? When you look up in the sky, every plane and helicopter that is flying now, I don't know the real number anymore, but it's hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of parts that came out of Western Mass that are making those planes fly. We don't make the planes here, but we pretty much build the engines. Um, up and down 91 from Connecticut all the way to Vermont, we're, we're Aerospace Alley. Aerospace manufacturing here is, happens here. Defense manufacturing here happens here. Um, during the pandemic, we weren't allowed to close down. The Homeland Security was going to be all over me if I shut my doors down because of the, the fact that most of us are part of the defense industrial base. 
you know, we, uh, we can bring in as much technology as we want, as long as we can have the, you know, find the people. I'm looking up at that row up there, you know, to come and work for us. We're looking for bright people anywhere. It's not just at my shop. It's at every company. There are, we're all hiring. We're all always hiring. Um, let's, you know, let's find a, a way to change this world, change how manufacturing is done. A lot of companies, we look at it, it's very hard to look at things how they need to be done in the future because we're so stuck in the way we've always done it, but that needs to change. And it's the youth that's going to happen. That's going to make that happen. The majority of my new hires come out of technical schools, Springfield Community, Technical Community College, UMass, hopefully Western New England coming up soon. Um, <laughs> so we're, we're in the middle of an expansion plan at Peerless Precision. We started it in 2019 at another 10,000 square feet to my, my facility. Pandemic kind of put a pause on it for good reason. By the end of this year, I am looking to restart that expansion. At that time, we're going to be looking at bringing in more machinery. That is why I am super excited about this economic development bill. Because through the assistant, through the partnership with the state, um, rubbing elbows with the, the Mass Tech Collaborative and everything, not really, but applying, you know, applying for the grant and getting it will give us a, an advantage and an upper hand and able to bring all that machinery in, which is going to just inc increase our competitiveness. It's going to create a ton more jobs um, and just boost the economy. So it's hard to do this in two minutes or less, and I don't think I, I stuck to that at all. Um, <laughs> I can talk about manufacturing all day. Um, it is just my pleasure to be here today. Um, you guys may be all a little nervous boasting me up like that, um, but thank you all. Call me when you guys are looking for jobs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you. That's right. That's right. And on that note, it is my pleasure to introduce my colleague and actually one of my customers, Mike Tomasi, who is the co-chair of the Advanced Manufacturing Collaborative and president of AccuRounds. Mm. Thank you, Kristen. And what Kristen may or may not know is the parts that she helps us out with, 80% of the world's flu vaccine flows through that shaft. See that? Made in this state. We do very similar work at Accurounds that, that Kristen does. And, and one other note about Peerless, and she, I think she, we've talked about this, but her dad and I, God rest his soul, were stomping on the State House 25 to 30 years ago for funds to be put into advanced manufacturing. And we started back then and we're still doing it. And we'll talk a little bit about all the progress that we've made in the last 25 years. But we make shafts, pins, valves for medical, defense, aerospace, semiconductor, uh, robotics. We make shafts for Amazon Robotics. We make shafts for Walmart. It's awful nice to see a wire come in from those two companies every once in a while. Puts a little smile on my face. Um, we, um, we have 80 team members in Avon, Massachusetts. Uh, I am a second generation family business owner as well. My father was an immigrant from Italy, came here when he was 17 with nothing, and now has two companies. My brother owns another company north of Boston, and, uh, and we have over 200 employees combined. So it's a true American story that he lived, thanks to this state. <laughs> the Advanced Manufacturing Collaborative, I've been involved since inception, which was November of 2011. I've co-chaired for longer than I could admit, but Secretary Howe is my third secretary co-chair, so you can do the math. Um, we have appointed representatives from manufacturing business leaders across the state, as well as government and education. And they are really responsible for adding input to the state's agenda and then taking that and driving it through their circles of influence. And I've been very honored to be part of that um, action and am pleased to see the progress that we've made, especially over the last, I would say, two administrations, starting in the Baker administration who invested and propped up the Center for Advanced Manufacturing out of Mass Tech, who runs a lot of these programs. And now with, with uh, Governor Haley and her administration, putting forth $99 million for advanced manufacturing, a brand new $25 million for robotics. It's fantastic. The, the importance of public and private um, partnerships is, is crucial. Um, this isn't the easiest state to do business with, but our resources are tremendously rich. And by combining public and private uh, people, we can develop programs, sector partnerships, job-driven training. Those are just one of many examples of successes that we've had uh, in our region and regions across the state. 
manufacturing is important, and Kristen mentioned um, the pandemic. I think the pandemic kind of brought a bright light to what many of us knew, how critical manufacturing is to our state. We pivoted out of the AMC, established a manufacturing emergency response team, and had companies that would take nine to 12 months to develop a product in three to, three to four weeks pivoted to manufacture medical gowns. Ben was a tremendous driver for Mass Tech and driving that activity. But because we had the educational institutions and the um, supply chain within this state, we were able to save our hospital system. We had doctors on our call, and Ben can attest that if we weren't able to do what we did, they would not have been able to perform all that they were able to perform and get through the pandemic. And what the pandemic also did was bring back work to our state. Our company grew 50% in three years through the pandemic, and we continue to grow. We put an addition on 10 years ago. I never thought we'd fill it up. We're starting to bust down old office walls to create floor space. So this, this economic bill, it's a tremendous commitment. It's beyond anything the state has ever done. Um, programs like the MMAP grant, we were a recipient. We purchased a robotic arm to actually help in loading and unloading the machine that was making the robot shaft for Amazon. Robots will not replace people. They will replace mundane work so those individuals can get upskilled, earn more money, and, and be more valuable to their, to their companies. And that's a very important point because there's a misnomer that gets sent on that. So by uh, taking advantage of that grant, all the workforce training fund dollars that are, that are going to be, uh, that have been placed and will continue to be placed across the state through competitive bids, we need to train up our team to continue to keep businesses that exist in the state and attract new businesses, not only for innovation. We're known as the number one innovation state in the country, but we produce here. We produce a lot. Mm -hmm. So on, on behalf of the AMC, on behalf of all our OEMs, our SMEs, our startups, I, I really want to thank Governor Haley, her entire administration. She has a tremendous, tremendous staff, uh, and, and I've interacted with many of them, uh, for their continued and stepped up commitment to our industry. We need those training dollars, we need those investments in capital so we can compete. Technology, what used to be you know, robotics in the early stages, which we now have, and, and 3D printing, and uh, big data and machine monitoring, that's it. those are in our companies now. Now it's the artificial intelligence you saw today. Now it's augmented reality, now it's virtual reality. We need investments and partnerships to help us invest, get our team trained up, integrate those technologies into our company so we can remain competitive and remain as a leader in the country in manufacturing. I'll, uh, one last comment about the robotic sector. We compete with California. Ira Moskowitz runs the um, Arm Institute in Pittsburgh. He used to be a co-chair before the secretaries of the AMC. I worked with him. Pittsburgh and Boston like to vie for who's the, who's the most creative in the startup, but just because I was there, he says that, but I think Boston is really the true foundation of robotics, and we want to maintain that. So again, thank you very much, Governor Haley. I'd like to welcome you back to the podium. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, okay, great, terrific. Uh, we're happy to take some questions. Yes. Yeah, no, I appreciate that question. Um, look, I said at the outset, you know, the first time I ever ran for office, I started my campaign in Western Mass. That was 2013, and my commitment remains true. It does uh, remain true for Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll, who sends her regards, and it's why I believe this administration has leaned in like no other when it comes to time spent in Western Massachusetts, engagement partnership with so many public, private, not-for-profit, um, we've done a few things. I increased resources to our Western Mass office. Lamar Cook is here today. It's his birthday. I'm sure uh, this is exactly where he wants to be. Um, and also just uh, the, the kinds of programming, right? Creating a rural direct, uh, director, for example. I and mean, we never had that before in an administration. There are a number of communities uh, in Western Mass affected. But, you know, um, we'll speak a little bit more about the specifics of the economic development bill. I'll let Secretary Howe handle that. But, you know, know that I view Western Mass as 
an incredibly beautiful region, not just for its beauty, but for what's there uh, in terms of human capital. Mm -hmm. There's undeveloped, untapped potential in this region of the state. As governor, I need to make sure the whole state thrives. I need to make sure that Massachusetts is kicking butt. We're in competition against states all around this country. And the secret sauce to that is working more directly, more intentionally with Western Massachusetts, with our mayors, with our legislative partners, with our incredible academic institutions, with our businesses. That's how we're gonna get this done for our state. And it's super, super exciting. I recall, you know, as I'm here in this region, we had, we had, if you think back, um, generations, you know, this has been a place that has been the hub of innovation, the hub of manufacturing. Think about what has come through here. It's part of our DNA. Mm -hmm. It just takes a little love <laughs> and investment, and that's what we're doing. It's different, you know? 100 years ago, 200 years ago, different kinds of things were being produced here. But the concept remains the same because the human talent remains the same here, the spirit um, and the collaboration. In terms of investment, we're talking just outside about the kinds of investments that my economic development bill is gonna re-up for places like Western New England. You're gonna see equipment in classrooms. You're gonna see resources for program, programming that's gonna actually enable these students to get out and fill the positions that Kristen and Mike and others need filled. So, you know, I think about, um, I think about those things and I'm really, really excited. I've also talked about, you know, in our economic development bill, how we're leaning into three additional areas, life sciences, climate tech, and applied AI. Each of those, each of those areas and sectors has an opportunity to further grow right here in Western Massachusetts. But I invite Secretary Howe to add anything else she wishes to, to that. Yeah, um, that's a great question, and obviously everyone knows that Western Mass is my happy place, so we think about this a lot. Um, let me first say that um, even before the bill, uh, all of our um, government uh, quasis, so Mass Tech is one of the leading ones, but Mass Ventures, Mass Life Sciences, Mass, um, Mass Growth Capital, Mass Development, Mass Clean Energy Center, when we give away grants, we look specifically at where those grants go, and we focus on um, all kinds of issues around equity, and in particular, geographic equity as well. The other thing is that Secretary Tutwiler, Secretary Jones, and I lead the Workforce Skills Cabinet, and as we look at where we invest in workforce skills, we're looking at the whole state, and especially at this awesome talent that the governor mentioned in Western Mass. So we are ready do a lot of work here, but as I said, there's more to do. And in the Mass Leads bill, um, there's a couple of uh, areas I'd highlight, right? So first is that I was at UMass Amherst yesterday meeting with Institute of Advanced uh, Life Sciences there. We, um, the governor has made a very bold move to reauthorize life sciences. We worked very hard as a team, Massachusetts, to win one of the two federal hubs for ARPA-H, um, President Biden's big moonshot in healthcare. So we've won this federal money, and we are reauthorizing life sciences. One of the exciting things about this reauthorization is thinking about how can we um, really take on this next phase of life sciences. So not just the awesome discoveries and the awesome patents coming out of our universities, but also all of the workforce, all of the biomanufacturing. And so we already have a lot of great success stories starting to happen where we have Moderna building plants um, outside of, uh, you know, outside of um, Boston and Cambridge. We have uh, you know, Ultragenics expanding north. And we have a bunch of other firms expanding here um, out west. So that is a big focus of this new life sciences reauthorization is how do we think bigger and across the whole state and across all kinds of people of different backgrounds benefiting from life sciences. So that's one chunk in the bill. The second thing I'd highlight is climate tech. So what's exciting about climate tech is not only do we want to be a leader in fighting climate change, which we already are, first ever climate chief, um, all of our ambitious targets, but we want to be the leader in creating jobs and startups and economic growth. And the great thing about climate tech is there's opportunities across all of our regions. We were at the BIC, I don't know when that was, Ben, and they were saying, we have so much opportunity here to think about things like solar and about batteries and about fusion. And so as you think about, and, and all of our coast, I was in um, South Shore last week, all of our coast has opportunities on offshore wind. So climate tech is a diverse bucket, and in this bill, and the billion dollars we propose, are um, opportunities for all different parts of the regions to grow climate tech. And it also creates all kinds of different jobs. So we need the science, but if you look at things like Commonwealth Fusion, taking the science and now having 500 jobs in Devons. You look at places like um, you know, Sublime, I was just there this morning. 
building um, carbon neutral concrete, now expanding to Holyoke with a big factory. And so there's lots of opportunities across our regions in climate tech, and that's a big piece of that, uh, that part of the bill. The last thing is, um, we've talked a lot about all of the advanced manufacturing and robotics. One, maybe I'll highlight a couple other things um, that we haven't talked about. One is that um, we have proposed a, um, a big piece of this as a um, regional hub development for technology. So um, we were really, really excited. We worked together under the Mass Tech's leadership to win chips in science. We want to win every federal grant, uh, but Unfortunately, they're not going to give everything to us. And so this region in particular, Springfield, for example, worked really hard to pull, put forward a grant on quantum, to be a leading hub in quantum. Now, we didn't win the federal grant, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't still lead. So the idea in this mass leads bill is even when we don't win the federal grant, how do we still have the resources from the state to accelerate and amplify the region? So this is a really important part of the Mass Leads Act, is this regional tech hub idea, for example, quantum in Springfield. Um, and then the other things that are maybe a little bit less tech relevant, but very important for Western Mass, um, we have a whole uh, section here on a rural designation for our rural towns who really need the economic help, and we have a lot of those in Western Massachusetts. And another sector that we're very excited about is um, the creative economy and tourism. We have a lot of that. We have, we're, we're so lucky in Western Mass to have the best museums, the best theaters, the best like restaurants and hotels and resorts, all these great things, um, artists, all of these great things here. How do we use the 250th anniversary of the founding of our country as a way to amplify that and use this as a reason, a reason to celebrate and bring people from around the country and around the world to our state and especially to Western Massachusetts to drive the creative economy and tourism? So that's also featured in our bill. So there's a lot of different things in here for Western Mass and we need to work together to bring this to life. But I, I agree with the governor. There is so much opportunity here and this is an awesome team. We can make this happen. Thanks, everybody. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention a few months ago we stood at Union Station, $108 million that we went out and got brought back here for investments to, uh, to further West East Rail, important improvements, Springfield, all the way into Worcester, at the Palmer. So more to come on that. I think we're good to go. Um, again, many, many thanks to President Johnson, the fantastic team here at Western New England University. And most of all, looking out at the students, we are so glad that you are here. We want you to stay here. We want you to grow careers here, grow businesses here, grow families here. And we want you to tell everybody out there that Massachusetts is the best place to be. So thank you very much.